one small step for man, one giant leap for a Land Rover reassembly owner. <laughs> Nice. It's not one small step for man, it's one small step for a hobby auto mechanic and one giant step for a Land Rover owner. These are aftermarket bolts. I had them left over from our very first suspension rebuild that we did a couple of years ago. They are from um, Advanced Factors. They are cheap but they rust. Must have been before Brexit. And also notice that I'm sitting down while doing work. <laughs> yes. Only an extremely skilled mechanic is able to sit down. I gotta what? hold a lecture. This is usually the point where I'm getting now the comments that we're not allowed to tighten these until the vehicle is down on the ground. That is absolutely true because these are suspension bushings. But these are here suspension bearings and the bearings they actually rotate freely so this one I can tighten to full torque. I also took a photograph of this one where my bolt was sitting because it has an alignment scale on here. So we're trying to do a good job not getting all embarrassed and falling off a cliff later on. Can you look at the these fall. two torques in your book? Rear, upper. Oh no I'm sorry forget about it I'm not allowed to torque them. Oh, Christian! Upper arm to hub carrier, 133 newton meters question. Yes, and those we can tighten because these are bearings and not bushings. So I actually gonna adjust this exactly to the same position where I took it out. And that should get us close. This third line got to line up with this indent. Third line? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's basically all the way over. Yeah. 133. Okay. Yeah, perfect. If we would have pushed in the bushings absolutely perfectly, that line would be now about over here. Oh. Okay, because it's supposed to be when the car is in right height, the arrow's got to be straight up and down, so we're a little bit off on the bushings. They're not going to last that long anyway. Yeah, that's... I wonder how long the grenadier bushing is going to last, because that thing weighs almost three tons. While I'm working here, okay, Vera has all the instructions here for me. That's the book from Georg Lofink, yeah. which is a hardcover edition, okay? Yeah. It goes back in here. There. goes here. These are, by the way, the pivoting bushes. Bolts. There. 133 newton meters. Yeah, the last touch -up. So, got the winch installed. We're gonna rivet up these heat shields here. I took them apart in order to coat these brackets with heat resistant paint. So, we put some extra washers in between here. See, and they look nice again. Mm. Here, I'm installing new cables for my parking brake actuator. You can see that here, they're all nice and shiny and new. Now, the old cables are still okay because they still move freely here. But who knows how long, because it's completely corroded here. You know, the mounts are completely corroded. And then also see how corroded they are here. So I think they will not last another 17 years and it's the best way to replace them now because it's difficult in the car later on. I've Inside the actuator, I did replace the gears once. Um, they are available from uh, shit part, I mean brit part. These actuators are extremely good if you keep your mechanism at the end of the cable maintained and if you keep your cables in a good shape. It's possible to install the cables without dismantling the actuator. All I gotta do is wind this thread in by five full turns. So I got new cables installed. And hopefully I didn't screw this up. <gasps> it's another day. One of those many never-ending days on that Discovery re rebuild. So what's the plan now? Um, we gotta quickly replace this boot here. Quickly? Yeah. That boot is broken and it hasn't lasted a year. So Christian got an extractor set. You can configure it to different sizes, which is really neat. So for example, now I need a larger size. So I put that in here. Yeah. Yeah. And it's very beefy. Oh, beefy is always good. 
So I give this a little bit of tension. Boy. So. Axle out here, which is a close fit. It's out. Fly out into the yeah. garage when you push it out. There we go. <laughs> So what sucks is, in order to get to this one, we have to take this one apart. That sucks, really. So, we're gonna need two new hose clamps. Of course, a lot of grease in here. Oh boy. There. Oh, is that a lot of grease. So, it's gonna come off. This boot has to come off now. Now we're gonna replace this one. Okay. And hope that the new boot from the same manufacturer fits. Oh my god. This is the manufacturer whose boot didn't last one year. So this one got to go back on. Cool. And, and you forgot the grease question. So we put a little bit of grease back in. So this one. Now the hardest part will be to close those clamps. I've not shown you how to close the clamps and how to get them on. But I had to get my third arm out, okay? My third arm out, the camera don't work anymore. <laughs> but why is it it's not going stupid. on? stupid. If it falls off in the desert, at least we know who screwed it up. Yeah? See? Mm -hmm. oh. Think about how much grease is driving around on our roads. Yes, at least we are not losing any of that grease. And this goes back on here. Oh. There. Oh, it looks too big. This goes back over it. And whoever paid really close attention can see that this is now the old boot again. Because the new boot out of the repair kit did not fit. Yes. Same manufacturer. There oh, we go. Like that. But it feels tight. Yeah, so close it up and let's move on. Yeah, okay, we gotta put on one more and then we're done. Good. So not even one year ago, we put in new half shafts and new differential seals on. And so this time we only replaced the broken boot. So I got plenty of copper grease on the spline. Yeah, I have to say that was now an easy putting back in job. Okay, an easy putting back in job. <laughs> Sometimes I miss the correct words. That's how you do that stuff. I'll get the Torx out. Yeah, I, I got the Torx in my head. Ooh. Okay, so it's click, click. I'm not going to let you get away with that. Of course you do. <sighs> so I'm just going to give this a few with the Uga Duga. Okay, that's good enough for now. We'll put this back together. It looks really old. Well, it's brand new. <laughs> I actually have a spare one at all times in my car. I always need two tools. Oh, I don't think that's like that on a Toyota. So we just give it approximately 115. Not approximately. Approximately is good enough. Oh, yeah. Perfect. We haven't even started on the transmission also yet. There are only two things to do. Change the oil, fix that one leaky seal here, and fix the input seal. Yes, and, and replace the hose, which we cut. Yes. Just as old. Perfect. I got new BWI shocks. Everything new. Yes. Ooh. Look at that. You want copper grease on them? Yes, of course. Well, why did your wife drive off the cliff? I don't know. <laughs> well, we found there was a strut nut loose. I don't know. Never touched it. Must have been that Toyota driver. So easy. 60. Yes. They are 
only manufactured by me. Those are the original ones. There we go. We'll torque it to 63. Click, click. Is it that far up high? Yes. That's so the water can run in and stand in here like a little drinking fountain. Yes. So so easy. Just like Steve in the plant did it 17 years ago. Very well. All four struts in. The steering rack. Land Rover specifies to use new bolts for the steering. Which we of course do not. Of course. See these nuts here are captive. Yeah. Land Rover just makes... What? Christian? And These are sensitive connectors. I lubricated the one end and I pushed the seal back in, which jumped out. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, there's oil, damn it, on my. Oh, on my. Oh, that's that a big is mess. Really bad. 175 Newton meters. And we use imaginary new nuts and bolts. Perfect. Good. So, whatever that is called. Get 76 Newton meters. Perfect. Good. So steering is mechanically complete and the oil is being captured. Before lying on the ground here. So we're getting the tank ready. Perfect. Works good here. Yep. New bolts, of course. Robin is here. We got help. I don't have to lift it up that high. Can you bring it up? Me? Oh, yes. Is he ever going to say stop? I always ask if it's stainless steel, but it's not. And it's not because not everything is available. Yeah, but it's a 10.9. It's releasing the strap. For sure, this got to go over here. Yeah. And you're getting a new bolt. Two. How about that? Ooh. What? This captive nut belongs over there. We're not missing one. We're missing two? No. I put it in the wrong spot. Oh, okay. Precisely 50 Newton meter. Hank is installed. How is that? Yeah, and it's one less thing lying around. Sometimes we have to do things twice also. <laughs> Christian forgot to put copper paste on every single boat. And he will torque them. I always get my way. Perfect. <laughs> Christian, if you, I think it's broken. Oh, the captive nut is broken. Yeah. It's the next day. So, as you can expect on a 17-year-old car, the captive nut is completely deteriorated. Christian now has to fabricate a new captive bolt. These are the things which hold up and you don't expect that. Now, this took an extra half an hour to get this nut done. Well, that's about the time when Sarah Untuned has a 15-minute time-lapse video. So when you do the wiring harness, it takes forever and it's really boring. That's why I'm stuck doing it alone, I think. Can you get the new fuel filter? Oh, my crankshaft is in the way. By the way, it's the old crankshaft. Please. Let me check if this is it. Ooh. It says fuel filter. Nice. Look at that. Nicely done. Yeah. Stainless steel parts. So it will last another eternity. Putting all the fuel filter brackets back together so those hoses are not loose anymore and dirt can get in. I mean, I can see why Land Rover would take the body off to change the fuel filter. 
And here you get more fuel filter caps you like so much. Don't break it. It's on. It's yeah. too. Well, they gotta go here. Beautiful. Very satisfying. So my freshly restored engine mount. Beautiful. When Christian ordered this wear center and I opened it, I thought already, oh, TRW, I never heard of that cheap Chinese, but guess what? My steering rack is from TRW. Originally, they had the opposite. They had Loctite on. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's almost done with the wiring harness, only two meters left. I'm replacing these old fasteners with new fasteners. And they are, of course, stainless steel. See how nice that but looks? But the white plastic is old. When I want to click this one on now, see it doesn't click, oh? is I take a little bit of silicone grease and put it here on the inside. Now watch it. Isn't that magic? Everything looks new except for the tie rods. I can't get over the fact that they look so far. They're not even six months old, so it's no sense in replacing them. Another one. So I remember when we took the car apart and the wiring harness off, Christian said, well, it will be all self-explanatory where everything goes. Because it's not as self-explanatory. Take pictures of everything you take apart, guys. It's not that important. And now he moved in 20 minutes all the way from here. That was tricky. So you got to know that. To here. Coming from the inside, going to the outside, here, over here, here, and all the way over here again. Watch. Not yeah. watch, listen. So, cleaning the air, air hoses. Remember, my front air valve is brand new from Amazon. These are nylon air hoses. They are very durable. Yes. So, we hooked up the air hoses. And we're going to put on some illegal tie wraps here. Yeah. It's, one is green and one is black. What the? Yes, Christian tie wraps everything. And now we are ready to install the compressor. Oh my God. That is at least one or two of your fault codes. You know, when you get a really rusted ground cable. Be really careful and use copper grease. Okay. Every time you hear a click, that is so satisfying. Yeah, it's either breaking or <laughs> yeah. snapping. You probably need my hand now. No, I don't need a hand job. <laughs> there we go. My long, let me stay away from work extension. Yep. And I think it's right here. Beautiful. Beautiful. So we do have the service records of this vehicle and this is the original compressor installed when the vehicle was new and it's an AMK. Yeah. Even if some people think that one was installed afterwards. Maybe it was a recall, but then it would be in the records. Yeah. So I used many of my plugs, use silicon grease, otherwise your O-ring will go. Guess why we know. Push lock hose and a protection ring. Oh. So, there's a push lock fitting. That didn't sound... A push lock fitting doesn't snap. Oh, they okay. have to invent that still. Very oh. good. They should invent ratchety ventures which can... Oh, now you're going to get a hundred <laughs> comments that this somebody already invented it. No, but... You got your legs in my way. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> nice. Oh. 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 So usually when something falls down the second time, he says, turn off the camera. Good. I'm going to do that one also again, because he decided to put in bigger washers. I'll do it twice. <laughs> so putting the cover back on. 
It looks a bit weird, but... You know, they go here through the foam. Yeah, but who but cares? it's nicely on. My differential breather hose. Stuff like that you don't want to forget because it's extremely hard to install later on when the engine is in. So this thing is dangling around now. Yeah, that's too bad. Oh. I'm afraid we forgot those. Now which heat tilt goes where? He refuses to look at the picture. He has pictures. This looks good. Oh, so satisfying with copper grease. Yeah, and there's a big hole there. Oh my. This yeah. side we're mounting now. The other side we're mounting when we put the engine back in. So, how do you know your wife has a better endurance than yourself? Well, when you keep thinking about what rock song to play on your own funeral, I guess. I label these with left and right, and I'm using right, so. But that's left. That's not very good, I have to say. <laughs> Let me do it, I'm faster than you. You gotta do what you gotta do to get things done. We're gonna try. Okay, now you gotta say that with more confidence. Yeah. <laughs> Right now there is no confidence. <laughs> that looks not entirely stupid. Now I'm gonna grind this to the right shape. You get the idea what he's doing with that tool? Yeah, I'm not gonna... everybody does. Look at that. Oh my god, I, now I'm impressed myself that this works. Oh my god. Christian is annoyed by everything. Everything is... I outsmarted this assembly. See, what I gotta do is I gotta plug it in here first, and then I rotate this around like this clip this in here like this and everybody knows that i'm smart slowly yeah. well, guys this is about an hour and a half into my heisenberg experiment so here this is before and Look at that, guys. This is unbelievable. Remember, Land Rover recommends 5W Dumbass. The third step is the developer. There are no cracks. Okay. No, you have to wait What's 20 that? minutes. Yeah? And it okay. will be full of cracks after 20 minutes. <laughs> And hold it straight. Good. 0.35. If I enter this in here, Oh, it's too tight. She does not believe me. She has to verify it herself. I remember the most confusing scale on the planet. Christian yeah. wanted an A8 after he watched Ronin. Thank God, that, that didn't happen. Uh, I think that's not over yet. <laughs> oh, okay. I talk. You talk? Yeah, so we got the first... Plastic gauge test here completed and what's the verdict my dear? A little bit less than 0.038. Okay, so show everyone what was causing that major clonking noise in your car and you had me look around if your suspension is all working and if your...